Have you ever done anything completely illogical and outlandish just because you felt like it? Like say, for example, buy an ex-police car at an auction site in Southern California and drive it 2,241 miles home to Georgia? Me neither. Until today. Now where's my Uber? Uber showed up right on time. Jonathan. In your Tesla. Hey man, you don't worry about uh, these things catching fire and burning you to a crisp? Not at all. Look at this stuff Jonathan's got back here for his past. Man, why you got earplugs? Just in case they don't want to hear anything, you know? Yeah. Candy. What in the world we got? It's like being on a Willy Wonka cruise ship. You don't charge extra for it? No, not at all. Like a, you know, like a candy banquet? Not at all. I usually have, you know, nutritional, you know, chips and stuff like that, trail mix and all that, you know. Just water on the side too if you need any. Oh yeah, water on the side. Look at that. So we're on the 15, right? Yes. Heading to the 215 North. It's like an hour ride for me to pick this thing up. Let's see, Paris, that's uh, east of LA, right? Yeah. Will you be able to get a ride back? Mm -hmm. Or will you have to do that on your own? Or will you end up somewhere else, like San Francisco or something? Funny thing you say that. Yeah. It's because I'm actually heading out to San Francisco. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I, I called that one, didn't I? <laughs> What is that, six, seven hours from here? Yeah. Will this car make it that far? Or uh, you I have mean, to stop and charge I will something? have to make several, yeah, I'll probably have S to do maybe Several? Three. Yeah, several. Huh. Several. Well, well, so how far can, can you work all day in this thing? So this thing allows me to work in, in the car or the Uber? Yeah, the car, the car the is car, what I'm The asking. car only gives me 264 miles. That's it? Yes. Yeah, I'm just wondering like how how many rides so, do you get in before you have to charge it up again? So it just depends. So pretty much to say you get like a very long, long ride, then uh, yeah, during that ride you might have to charge, you know? With somebody like on the ride you might have to charge? Yeah, yes. Oh. Sir, yeah. What are you like, all right, look, we got to stop here for 45 minutes while I get some juice? Yes, sir. I mean, I just... I just did that last, uh, within the last week or so, I ended up getting my first out of state, um, ride all the way to Las Vegas. Oh, wow. And were they like, what the hell? No, they, they knew that it was gonna take some time and they knew that it was a Tesla and it was requiring a charge, charge downtime. No, oh, okay. So they understood that. Okay. Well, I'm not expecting any of that. You got battery right now. No, no, I got battery, sir. All right, Jonathan, thank you very much. Yes, of course. I appreciate it. Uh, be on the lookout for that five-star rating. Thank you, appreciate it. Well, I made it to the lot here. 40 miles took two hours. California traffic. I want to tell you, that guy was so patient. He was like, oh, you know, it is what it is. California traffic is like a back alley vasectomy. Look at this one. Rambler. I don't know, maybe I should have bought that to drive to Georgia. But actually, I'm here for this. So Henry, did you want to pull it out so it nothing gets I hit? I can't. Yeah, I mean, oh, let's see, what did I do? Perfect, you got it. I, I don't mind tearing my stuff up. I don't want to tear your stuff up. Yeah, no what do we got over here? That's like a, a wannabe bumblebee. Garbaggio, Garbaggio. I bet that would be cool to do something with. Range Rover, wonder how much that went for, huh? Yeah, look at that. Well, it runs anyway. You're all set. You said it runs and drives, huh? Absolutely. We'll do a light check right quick, since, you know, it'll probably be dark before I freaking get back I just want to make sure we okay yeah
Oh wow, look at that. Looks like you got LEDs up front. So I, we don't have time to, I'll tell you what we're gonna do because I got an hour back and you, you can see I'm losing daylight. So we'll get this back and then it'll be dark. So we will meet up in the morning to, uh, you know, walk through the thing and see what we got going on. It's got that awesome power steering wine Fords are famous for. Got my title though. I guess that's all you really need. So you think people are going to scooch out of my way on the way back? 100%. <laughs> Maybe I'll flash the high beams at them or something. Get, get out of the way. Get out of the way look to it. Uh, that's awesome. That's what we want. Get out of the way look. Have you actually driven this? I personally have not. That's as far as you've driven it? Yeah. That 35 feet? Yeah. Well, how was it during that 35 feet? Fantastic. That's all we need. All right. Well, I guess we just get in it and hit the road. Is that how it works? 176,000 miles and very little gas. All right. Oh, I got a tilt wheel. All right. Let's hit the road, I guess. Seat belt. You don't want to, you know, get caught without your seat belt, I guess. Okay. Let's go see if we can, I don't know, terrorize some criminals or something. Oh, look, the power seat works. Head east on West Perry Street, then turn right onto North Paris Boulevard. Okay. Criminal to terrorize some criminals. <laughs> Let's go terrorize the criminals. Oh, the windshield's cracked. I never, I didn't, they didn't mention that. I forgot to get some, uh, footage of the dude's banner or whatever but I'll uh, I'll put a link in the description for where I bought this thing. In one and a half miles turn left to merge onto I-215 south towards San Diego. Look at that. First impressions it uh, I mean the brakes seem okay but it's uh it's got some whines and groans and vibrations it's got like this deep low vibration it feels like a tire or a wheel bearing or something so we'll i guess we'll have to look into that and i don't know is it the wrong time to mention that it smells like the ass of a goat in here or is that completely inappropriate oh what's this doing nothing i don't know where's my cop light i need to be able to write tickets and stuff about these oh well that oh i can adjust the pedals down but how about that that's fancy i'm hungry dang it let's go well these lights are terrible for about 38 miles continue straight on 38 miles another two hour ordeal it's whining at me every time i get on the gas here boy this road is terrible this road is just all beat up but hey, I got cop suspension. There's definitely a wine in the drivetrain somewhere. Almost sounds like maybe it's the rear end or something. The faster you go, the louder it gets. Or the longer you drive, the louder it gets. One or the other. But we'll probably put that on the list of things to completely ignore. Well, I'm running like almost 80 and so far so good, but it is, uh, you know, in need of some fuel, so. We'll stop and put some gas in it. Yeah, we gotta put some gas in this puppy. I assume it takes 87. <sighs> Something is rattling its tail off back here. We're gonna have to go through this whole thing. Although it's not driving terrible. It's just, uh, you know, it sounds like you're in the engine room of the USS Eisenhower. Okay, I smell oil. That's fine. 
we won't worry about that either all right let's finish it up well we made it the 40 miles back to my home base here in california uh, but there's definitely some crazy noises and vibrations and stuff going on so we'll check it out i'll see you in the morning well unless you have spent the last decade and a half locked in a basement you'll recognize right away that this is a Ford Crown Victoria. And if you have been in a basement that long, I'm incredibly sorry, and you should probably get some therapy or something. This, of course, is the P71. Actually, this is a 2011 model, so it's a P7B police interceptor. Very common, you know, they're everywhere now. They've mostly all been retired, and people race them and beat them up and hot rod them. I don't know, they do all kinds of stuff. I did not buy this because it was a P-71 Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. I bought it because it was an ex-California Highway Patrol car and it was black and white. I would have done the same if it was a Charger or anything else, but this was the first one I came across, so voila. I'm apparently the third owner of this fine automobile. The most notable owner, of course, like I said, being the California Highway Patrol who had it the longest and beat the ever-loving crap out of it. I know it looks good from over there where y'all are. But I'll get you up close here in a minute and, uh, you know, point out some flaws. Let's pop the old hood. So after doing some research out on the World Wide Web, what I have learned is that these cars have some pretty common problems. The intakes will crack. The car will overheat. The transmissions die. And what else was it? Anyway, I forget the last thing. Maybe something minor, uh, air conditioning or something like that, that I don't give two cents about. But the one thing that was also pretty, uh, you know, renowned was that this 4.6 liter Ford V8, uh, they're hard to kill. And if you're going to drive 2,241 miles across country with a car, it's probably, you know, a good idea to get something that's hard to kill. And after driving it to 40 miles back last night, I can tell you this is what I know, okay? I don't know how any police officer or any service person or whomever drove these things in the past would stay in that seat all day long because I already feel like I need a butt cast. So driving this thing cross country ought to be a hoot. The other things I know is it's got this crazy knock in the back and that only happens when it's in motion. It doesn't do it at idle. It doesn't, you know, but as soon as the car starts rolling, you get ding, 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 ding. And the faster you go, the faster it goes. It goes, you know, ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. So we're going to have to figure that out. And there's also this whine that feels like it's in the drivetrain. Um, so somewhere between the transmission and, uh, you know, tires. So I, I don't know. I feel like that's maybe a wheel bearing or something, but we'll look at that. And the transmission does feel like, you know, at certain points, it didn't do anything that was blatantly obvious or, you know, made me say, oh, crap. Uh, but it did act a little funny. Of course, you know, I've never driven one of these before, don't know much about them, so it, that could be normal. Who knows? I don't know why I shut that. I got to open it again to show it to y'all. I did pull the Carfax on it because I really wanted to verify that it was California Highway Patrol car. You know, chips, chips, man. Come on. None of you have heard of chips, Johnny Poncharello or whatever their name was. So I have some interesting information that I'll share with you. So here we got 2011, uh, you know, it was serviced, blah, 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 and then purchased by California Highway Patrol. And then it's got all these service records from 2011 to 2012, 2014, uh, service, 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 2015, 2015, service, 2016, service. Oh, look, accident, 2016 service service 2018 2018 2018 2019 service 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 2019 service 2020 service 2020 so, oh look accident number two 2021 uh, service service now we're in 2022 service and then apparently at somewhere between 153 and 158,000 miles Highway Patrol sold it off or did something with it, changed the title or the lien or whatever. But anyway, here's a damage report 2023. So that's number three. 2023 service, service, 2023 service, uh, and then 2024, 
auction. So best I can tell, the last service was done at 172,000 miles in October of 2023. So that's not that long ago. It's got 176,000 miles on it. So five or 6,000 miles, that's not too bad. So, you know, bunch of service, several accidents, 6,000 miles since the last oil change. I'm sure it's absolutely fine. Now let me get you up close. We'll take a walk around this thing. Obviously they took all the cool cop stuff off. This is where the uh, push bar would have been. And I'd really like to have that. The headlights are, you know, frosty and it's got dings and scratches and paint missing pretty much everywhere. This is where the uh, spotlights would have been. There's a, a nice cut out there. These wiper blades I don't think have been changed since, uh, well I don't know when, but I tried to use them last night and it was terrible. All kinds of stuff mounted to the roof of this thing and, and here I guess I don't know what happened to the plug. Uh, but we've had like a week and a half of rain, so I'm sure the headliner's not got any mold or anything on it. There's dings and dents and scratches, you know, nothing major obviously, but just, you know, little stuff that's not perfect. There's some areas here where the paint's peeling off, and I heard that's a common problem with Ford painted police cars. They weren't too worried about it, I guess, didn't do the best of jobs. The tent in the back glass has more bubbles than Osti Spumante. It's just completely coming off, and that drives me nuts little uh whoopsies here and there that's the, the dealer that, that got the car from auction that's where i got it from i mean this is the whole reason you buy the thing right here right interceptor nice little scrapes this side of the roof same thing this is the worst spot right here missing this mirror cap and then of course we've got this other spotlight hole it's got the 17 inch cop wheels and and you know i'm really excited that i got all four of these center caps i think that's fantastic you know one side we got the fire stones uh you know and and we've got michelins and we've got goodyear so you know i'll oh, pop the yell i only got one key you think i should make a copy in case i'd lose this because i lose everything it's probably a good idea anyhow let's pop the L trunko see what we got in here oh riot gear i'm just kidding there's no riot gear in here but there is this bar what does this go to what is this for oh is that my is that the bar that goes up front could it be oh this is super exciting there's no way is this the bar that goes here there's no way oh no well, dang it. Thought I was. Ow. Oh, my toe. Medic. Medic. Man down. Big toe got. Oh. Oh, that got my big toe. Oh, that got my big toe. Oh, my big toe. My big toe. Oh, big toe. Oh, that really hurts. That really hurts. It really, really hurts. Oh, 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 dang it. Oh, <sighs> oh, <sighs> well, that didn't go to this. So back in the trunk you go. Dang it. I was so excited. Ah, it's very, very disappointing. <sighs> what is this stuff? I know you want to see too. Fine. So nothing, you know, real exciting. There's a we got a spare tire. We got the jack down there. Of course, this whatever the Sam Hill this is. And these things, I don't know what these are either. They look like I don't know monitor mounts or something. <sighs> There's two of these. I had no idea. North Bayou. If any of y'all know what the hell this is, put that in the comments for me, would you? Looks like our, our liner is a little loose over here. We'll just do that. Under here, there's supposed to be a fuel fit. There it is. It's uh, some kind of little doohickey, so if you 
flip the car over or get on its side or whatever it so cuts the fuel off and then over here you know we've got a piece of plywood screwed to the side and i'm sure that was oh 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 did y'all notice when i just did that i don't think that's normal is it Is that normal? Can y'all tell me if that's normal? Crown Vic people, please tell me if this is normal. Is this for real? Is this supposed to do this? I don't think that's right. Does it do that? I think it's really neat that they had this reflector tape up here. So, you know, when you have your trunk open on the side of the highway, uh, you know, cars coming at you can be like, whoa, what's going on? And then, you know, we have crime scene tape. That's exciting. Anywho, that's what we got going on here. Let's go to the other end. I feel like I've done this once today already. Well, there it is. There's our 4.6 liter V8, and it's complete. I gotta say, like, I don't see, you know, any hackery or anything crazy. There's even, you know, indications of service. Apparently, they did uh, spark plugs and PCV at 79,000. Uh, pump doesn't say which pump belts 53,000 air filter at 58,000 looks like this battery was put on in April of 21 and it cost $142 and 8 cents whoo you can't get one for that nowadays but aside from you know some oil on the sides and uh, you know some seepage or grease or whatever that would just kind of happen naturally over time like this this um, valve cover is pretty heavily soaked and it looks like it's coming from our valve here i don't know what's happening there but aside from that i mean it looks to be in really good shape and i'll tell you it runs really smooth it's quiet like when i stop at a stop sign and it's idling i don't it i thought it cut off like you you know you can't hear it you can't feel it nothing so i'll be honest with you like from an engine standpoint i think it'll be fine um running across country Let's check the oil on it. See what we got here. Well, it's it's at the right level. It's oily. Smells like oil. Get in there, fella. Get in your hole. I think oil is good. Like we could we could stand to change it, obviously, but I think that's good. The belt looks okay. Nothing crazy there. The transmission fluid is something we will definitely check uh look at this this stuff is just crumbling off of here you know how that old that plastic wire loom gets when it's been on a car for a hundred years and burn up and it's all crispy that's what we got here synthetic atf only i wonder if that's really important does this does this then do the same thing Oh, no, it doesn't. Not like that. Now let me show you all the cabin. This is flippity-floppity. wonder what I could do about that. I know. Nothing. You kind of already saw some of this. Well, let me get... Let's get in here. Uh, yesterday. But basically, you know, it's... It's got the basic analog gauges. There's a little microphone that they left here this is that button i found last night moves your pedals up and down that's kind of sweet power locks power windows power mirrors power seat controls fancy it's the p71 so it's got the trunk release button here in the middle that doesn't do anything that's so your partner can be like kapow hit the button fly out of the side run to the back grab the shotgun basic heat and ac and my little flip out thing is missing I think this goes to this fancy radio. Somebody put a Kenwood in here. And, I mean, it sounds okay. This is my my cop light that don't work. I may just pull that down and see if I can fix it. Everything in here is vinyl. You know, they took their center console up, but the whole floor is this rubber vinyl with these, you know, and the big rubber mats. I wonder what that button's for. doesn't say anything doesn't do anything what's it for anybody know what this is for again 
comments, people. Help me out. Ugh. This is where you sit if you're a criminal. I have heard it said that they dis, you know, disable or whatever these door handles, and then I can see the lock buttons are taken out of here. So I'm not going to close myself back here because I'm a little big to be, you know, climbing over stuff. Oh no! Had that in my pocket. It's broke now. It's got a nice, comfy vinyl back seat. Boy, this window tent is really bad, and it's got this cover on it and i'll be honest with you like the seat back here is perfect it's beautiful there's no tears it's not stained nothing it's perfect but this cover how much dna is on this cover hmm. so anyway i think we got a halfway decent rig here we just got to figure out some of these noises and uh go through it and get some Get a few things done before we head off to Georgia. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the back. I don't like being back here. Okay, I don't like it. It's not. It's not a good. It doesn't. It's not a good feeling. Where's my key? I'm not going far with it. See, I told you. I got to get a copy. We'll go through this. We'll do a little bit of maintenance. I'm not putting any money in this car, people. Not putting any serious money in this car. Uh, we're going to check out some of these noises, maybe. You know, give it a tune-up, maybe. Uh, clean it up. Get it ready to drive to Georgia. In the meantime, I get to have fun doing some, you know, not cop stuff. None of my dummy lights are on. That's exciting. Speeder! We got a little prep work to do to old Johnny Law here before we can head off cross-country, so we'll start that now. James took care of the paperwork. Sent me a license plate. This way I can hopefully make it across, well, make it across country without uh, trouble from the real law. Yeah, I'm in the RV park, my home away from home. The first thing we gotta do is figure out what this horrible clunking sound is. The challenge I have is that it only makes the noise while you're driving the car. Ugh. I need an idea. Think, Hammer. Think. Huh. Well, since I can't be in two places at one time, Amber here is going to co-pilot me around so maybe I can figure out where the sound's coming from. You good for that? I'm good. Just don't throw me out. No promises. Are you like a lead-footed person? Yeah. Oh, you are lead-footed? We'll see. Fantastic. Oh, I think I, I think I hear it. Definitely. I think definitely in this wheel. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds terrible. Definitely in here. Most definitely in here. What is that? I don't know what's rattling around in there. I do not understand what's going on. Whoa, slow this puppy down. Well, with Amber's help, we were uh, able to isolate our noise to this rear wheel right here. Figured that out with my giant satellite dishes. I'll just chuck these wheels. That'd probably be a good idea. Had to go down to the freight store by the harbor there and Get me a jack and jack stands. Good Lord, it's way up there. There's seven miles of car before the rear differential. Let's see if I can worm my way into this other time zone here and get a jack stand underneath of it. Should be good. Okay, other side. I guess that'll be good. I don't need it real high off the ground. <sighs> Two hours later. I think there's a little slop in the U-joints. Spin off my cop lug nuts. I'll put them in there like Christmas story. Oh, fudge. Ooh. Well, I'm no genius, but I think that's a clue. All this grease in here and in here. Oh, it smells like axle grease, but I'm pretty sure it shouldn't do this. Whoa. 
Well, before I get carried away, I better go to the auto parts store and make sure they have the bearings and stuff. Oh, great. Got to get in the zone here. Well, we have to get out of the zone because they didn't have anything I needed. So we'll head over to O'Reilly's. Got to wait for the train. See if we have any better luck here. See there? Much better. They had everything I needed, including the uh, loaner tools to get the job done. Had to stop and get some grub. Went with Jack in the Box, you know, for its nutritional value. <sighs> All right, enough messing around. We got to see about getting this fixed up. I just hope the axle shaft ain't all jacked up. I don't know, it looks like a 10 millimeter or something. I don't mess around with Fords a whole lot. Probably need something heavier than a quarter inch. Boy, it is windy out here. I assume it's these two bolts here, but I don't really know. Just fixing my wheel bearing out here in the RV park. Oh, I gotta get these little, I gotta get that little doohickey out. This is what it looks like. Everything's a hammer. It doesn't seem to me like those should have to come out. Oh, the back side of this rotor is nothing but grease. You Ford people are hollering at me right now, aren't you? You don't know what the hell you're doing. I figured it out. Oh my God. Just grease everywhere. I'll just set you right there. Oh. How was it stopping? I would be very surprised if there's any oil in this differential at all. Look at that. <laughs> All right, we got to go underneath and uh, get the diff cover off and release this. I got to get all these bolts off. And there, I mean, there's no room to work under here. So uh, let me get this off and I'll come back to you. Okay, and then we got to, I guess, somehow. You want to hold that so you can? Uh huh. You want to hold that? Oh, yeah, you going to film for me? That'd be awesome. Amber's back, y'all. She's going to film for me. <laughs> I gotta pop this differential cover off of here and I'd be surprised if there's any fluid in it to be honest with you because it was all over the back. What the hell is that thing? Is it gonna come off? Boy, somebody really glued this thing on here. I probably need a heavier duty pry thingy. I think I'm bending it. Can you grab me a hammer? All right, let's see. There we go. I think. Holy crap. What did they put this on here with? Like liquid nails? Oh, there we go. I can take that top bolt out. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Just, you know, uh, working on the rear axle in the RV park. Well, this has got little clips or something at the top of it for some kind of little, there we go. Let me get that off of there and pull this out. Gear oil stinks. Yeah, I don't think I've ever smelt it before. Oh, well, I'll give you a, a <laughs> nice, um, a nice, uh, you know, dose here shortly. Okay, we got to spin this. All right, so I've got to find the car key, put the car in neutral. Will you put it in neutral? Don't start it though. Don't start it then. No, don't. Just turn the key and put it in neutral. Am I special? Huh? I said, am I special? Are you special? Yeah, I don't. It's not. Whoa! Are you okay? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Just startled is all. I can't put it in neutral. Why not? I don't know. There you go, I got it. Uh, of course you did. I... Oh, that's what we want right there. Okay, there's a... This right here is a, a pin that will release this pin so we can get the uh, axles cut loose here. You say you didn't know what gear oil smelled like? Yeah, it don't smell the best. Got my rod out. All right, Amber, you need to uh, push the axle in. 
Well, oh, there, there you go. I got to get this clip out. Well, I need in a little more, so more in. More in. Keep going. Put some ass into it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Maybe that's enough. Nope. Here, take that. Where's that hammer? There you go. Take this and tap it in. We need more in. More in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more in oh there we go yay all right now pull it out pull it out yep just pull it out straight out you're doing great except for it's not moving no it's not so <clears throat> that means you have to pull it out harder <laughs> harder <laughs> oh goodness i can't get it uh oh well what in the hell did it get hung up on boy this thing wants to be ornery that's what my family calls me huh that's what my family calls me ornery yeah I don't know what's holding it. I just know that it's being a pain in my ass. Okay, try knocking and tapping it in. I've got a bad feeling that our axle shaft is jacked up. Let me think here. I don't know, let's try this. There we go. That helped. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to improvise a little. Good job, Amber. <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard, right? <laughs> no, no, it's not supposed to be that hard. I wish you would look at this axle. Look how much metal has been chewed out of that thing. Like it's as thick as a quarter or more. Well, I guess I better get an axle coming too. All right. The auto parts store did not have the exact attachment that we need. Hopefully this will take care of it here. All right, here we go. Well, we're gonna have to get creative again, huh? Let me think, let me think. Because this really isn't the right attachment. But I don't want to give up on it because I don't want to leave this mess here, you know? Like I would at least like to get one side done. Yeah. And put the wheel back on so it doesn't look like I'm doing auto mechanics in the RV park. I don't know. I can't tell if it's budging or not. Sure don't look like it. No, it doesn't. Look, I'm bleeding. Oh, yeah, you are. From, I was like, what am I looking at? From metal. I need a propane torch. That'll get it out. Dang it. This really sucks. But there's no way I can't. There's nothing here I can rig up. The only thing I can do is either keep going and hope that it pops loose. Or go back to the damn auto parts store and see if I can get the right attachment. I'm going to have to... Go to the auto parts store. Well, I thought this would work. They didn't have the actual attachment. So I just had to go to a different auto parts store and get the correct one. Look how much easier it is with the right tool, huh? Look at all that. Well, how far up does it go? Last that'll be good enough. We're gonna send it. I just keep getting metal out. It just doesn't stop. It's like the 
gift that keeps on giving. All right. There we go. I'm going to pack some grease in these puppies just so they have something to eat on when we first get going here. I'm going to take just a little RTV and smear it around my seal here. A little bit of grease on my seal. I tried to clean up the caliper and the brake pads. And these brake pads are so soaked with gear oil and axle grease mm -hmm. that I've been wiping them off and everything. But if you just leave them sit here in the sun, they'll actually bleed out the grease. Here's our new axle. The cheapest place I could get one was Parts Geek. 80 bucks. Look. It's not all chewed up. This is how it's supposed to look. Look, nice and smooth. We're just going to put a little grease around here where it rides the bearings and slides into the seal and then a little up here on the splines. Now I'm going to go under there and catch it from you. All you have to do is slide it in. Hopefully it slides in easier this time. So all you should have to do is slide it in. All right. You good to go? Yep. Just be careful with the seal. Whoa. Oh. So there you go. Oh, that is much, much better, Amber. That's how this crap's supposed to work. So I put this clip on. There we go. All right, now you pull it out. Pull it out? Yep. There. That's as far as you can get it. Now spin her around. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. All right, now we got to get the other side because there's no point in um, not doing it while we're here. And then we can button it up and take it for a ride. Got the other side done. Got the diff cover put back on. I got, uh, I don't know if it's right or not, but I got 7590 and you know some limited slip juice cleaned up these calipers as best i could but uh wow the grease tried to clean up this rotor too it'll burn off eventually right i like to depress my calipers with channel locks i don't recommend this by the way It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be, won't you be? Please won't you be my neighbor. All right, I guess I'll dump the oil in this thing and then uh, see what else is on the list. Suppose we should take it for a ride and make sure we've fixed the problem, huh? <clears throat> Oh, I got to put this in neutral so I can check the transmission fluid. I hope this part brake works. Probably not. Probably full of grease. Mm. Helps to have a rag. No, oh, yeah, that's good too. All right. Oh, I remembered that other thing that goes bad. Driver's power window. Oh crap. Yep. Put the car in park. <clears throat> sure. So it's driving it's up it's driving much better now, yes. What percentage do you think will make it well you think it would uh, make it back to Georgia? Or not back to Georgia, but to Georgia. Uh what percentage? Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I mean I'm hoping a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if it breaks down along the way, well, then I'll hitch a ride with some hippies in a oh. bus or something. <laughs> in a bus? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so okay. that, 
Thanks for helping me with this. This was the first time you did this, right? It, yes, it was. Changed an axle? Yeah. Changed a bearing? Yeah. <laughs> Worked on a car ever? Ever. I don't even change my own oil. Oh, I can my put gosh. air in my tires. You put air in your tires? I can do that. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. All right. Well, I, uh, I appreciate the help. So yeah. uh, thank you for that. Of course. Uh, you did a good job. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're no James, but you'll do in a pinch. I guess the next thing we do is address this interior. I got to spend several days in here. And this, oh, we're going to see about addressing the grunge here. I got this uh, carpet and upholstery cleaner with the little brush doohickey thing on it. You know how they talk about smell vision Absolutely true, because it smells like wannabe gangster and drunken prostitute in here. Yeah, this seems to be working all right. I don't know how much is enough. Am I getting it over there? Smells like aggravated assault in here. Smells like petty larceny in here. Ooh, smells like a tweaker puke on a crackhead in here. Oh crap, that's not right. What? Nope, there we go. Smells like a DUI on a suspended license in here. We're gonna ditch that. It smells like breaking and entering in here. <sighs> Whew. Smells like domestic violence in here. Whew. Smells like a long rap sheet in here. Smells like felony mischief. Oh, move this seat up. Now look at all the crap under here. Smells like corrupt cop in here. That's some kind of pill. Ugh. And a dime. Smells like gangbangers with syphilis in here. Smells like forgery. We're gonna ditch this thing too. I don't know how it's in here, but it's got to go. Oh, oh, it smells like racketeering. It smells like the Crips and Bloods in here. It smells like bribery and fraud. Why is that so loose? Oh, well, that could be why. It's not on the hooks, man. Get in there. How close are we to the hooks? Oh, that seems like quite a ways. There we go. Mm, smells like a Rico case in here. Smells like a drug dealer with an abscessed tooth in here. Oh, smells like tax evasion. <laughs> I don't know. I can't come up with that many crimes, okay? I don't know that many crimes. I gave you all about all the crimes I know. <laughs> oh, goodness. It just smells bad, okay? Just know that. <clears throat> Maybe this will help. Smell a lot less like a third-rate pimp. <clears throat> okay, I had one more. The foam on this steering wheel has seen better days. So I got this funky spongy cover thingy here and we'll see if this <clears throat> helps i don't know seems okay maybe i put some zip ties on it let me tell you all something 2200 miles is a long way to go uh you know holding your own coffee cup so i got this 12 dollar plastic center console from wally world and of course you know, I'm going to run it in with some self-tappers right to the freaking console or the center thing here. Oh, crap. I went right through. Apparently, I need longer screws. Well, crap. We'll come back to that. Well, we got to see what we can do about this crappy window tent because I can't see a thing. Maybe we just start in the middle. This is going to be a nightmare. Probably my dollar store uh, razor blade thingy is 
not the best approach either, huh? Oh, crap. What's the over and under on these defrosters working anymore? This is going to take forever. This has got to be exciting to watch, huh? How about I uh, plug away at this and come back to y'all later? Well, I'm a little more than halfway done, I guess. Uh, I got to some... Need to grab some fresh blades, and I got to get this third brake light thingy off of here so I can get the tent behind it. Yeah, hopefully this just pops off. There we go. I went and got me a better scraper thingy. Maybe this will help. Oh yeah, this tent stinks and it's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in here. Oh, this really, really sucks. I'd rather have my wisdom teeth taken out again. You can put them back in and then take them back out again. I'd rather do that than this. There. Now, am I worried about every little speck? No, I am not. That's the next guy's problem. Oh, it's on the sides too. And it's wavy. But it's not bubbling. So forget it. That's not happening. No way. Okay. Now we turn our attention to the exterior. Well, when you drive completely across the country, the odds of you hitting some rain are pretty fair. And these wiper blades suck. There. Piece of cake. My windshield has this big old crack in it that runs all the way over here. So I did what anybody would do, and I called Safe Light Auto Glass. And when I explained to them what I was doing and that I expected them to replace this for free, they hung up on me. So I'll fix it myself. Perfect. I feel like these holes in the face of this car are going to have an adverse impact on my fuel mileage. So, we'll give it the NASCAR treatment. Oh, you got a boo-boo. There you go, friend. We got this giant hole in the roof here. I guess where a plug came out or whatever. I don't know what happened. I just know that it's been raining a lot and this this isn't going to work. I don't need a cross country shower. And no, I don't have a plug for that. But that's okay because I got white duct tape too. You can fix anything with duct tape. Perfectly waterproof. Big giant cookie monster cut out in the door. No problem. Like factory. Okay, I'm back. Longer screws. Now let's see if I can get these jokers to go through here. Dang it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now I got somewhere to put my mocha latte. Well, there's only one thing left to do now. Yeah, I'm not taking a whole lot. No tools at all. I got, a, you know, some transmission fluid and oil just in case. And that's about it. Well, except for my big old pot here, but that's a whole nother story.
but I guess I will be able to say that I drove a used police car all the way across the country with a whole lot of pot in the trunk. All right. Well, I got my little $11 Walmart cooler with drinks, and I got some water, and I got some snacks, and I got my, you know, essentials. This thing here was sent to me by a company called Sinkwire. They just sent it to me. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have anything going on with them. So I certainly don't make anything. But anyway, uh, told me I should try it out. It just holds your phone there. I thought that was kind of cool. So we'll give that a shot. They're on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Again, I don't make anything off of this, but it, it does seem, you know, pretty cool. It's like aluminum and magnetic and stuff. All right, we got a shotgun at the Dallas, Texas. We got important cop meetings, you know, out there that I need to attend. Oh, them wipers are much better. I cannot stand looking out of a dirty windshield. Georgia, here we come. Let's see, we're starting out at 176, 154. And I am getting a late, late start today. to a rip-roaring good start here. This says I have 17 minutes to my exit, which is a whopping four miles away. I gotta ditch the aviators, don't care for that. This is much better. Oh crap, pay attention. You know everybody goes from 75 to zero like that. It's a good workout for the transmission. It's a solid test for sure. If the car makes it out of California, then the transmission will hold up, no doubt.
I mean, the ingredients are there to bake the cake, is all I'm saying, okay? If you bake the cake with those ingredients and fed it to me, I'd eat that joker. People are moving out of my way. That dude just moved out of my way. I mean, dude, you see my bumper? It says not the popo, which I guess you can't see the bumper from the front. But now that you're looking at it, you're probably thinking, why did I get out of his way? Boy, this is nice. Just a nice cruiser. I actually had people tell me, I hope you break down. That makes for better content. Yes. I suppose if it goes this move, the only thing you get to see is scenery. So, enjoy the scenery. Well, I'm about three hours in. We made it to the Arizona line. The car's doing great. Although, if you get over 75, there's a little left to right wobble in the front end. I didn't think about checking those front wheel bearings. And I would venture a guess that this is the first time this car has actually left the state of California. Yeah, we got us a traveling Oreo now. I just want to check to see if Oh no, cool as a cucumber. We should be good. My route has me running right along the southern uh, U.S. border here. That's Mexico over there. Well, way over there, but it's over there. Yeah, that's right. Let me over. Let me in. put gas in this car the first night uh, we picked it up and I, I went ahead and filled it up and I haven't touched it since but I haven't really driven it so we started off with basically a full tank but I don't know how many gallons that is but it looks like we've done 200 miles and I'm almost down to a quarter so I think when the next time we need to stop for fuel, we'll make a note of how many gallons we get out of it. You know, we'll calculate our fuel mileage. I don't know, the car may do it, who knows, I don't know. The sun's going down, we're basically losing all our daylight here. Uh, so I got several hours I'm gonna have to do in the dark with some of the crappiest lights I think uh, I've, ever, I've ever seen. I can see right there in front of me, that's it. But that's okay because I got Eric Church turkey bites. If you haven't tried these turkey bites from Wally World, you're missing out. Delightful.
Hey, did you hit it too? Yeah. Do you know what it was? I think it was a tire. A tire? Yeah. Oh, I walloped it good, man. Yeah, I bang it right on the side. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it was a tire that when he left, the, the way he left the, the marks on a piece of uh, metal, like a tire. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least it wasn't a body or something. Yeah, crazy. no, no, no. It, it hit like a metal. Yeah, it probably, probably from the, from the pickup. Oh, The yeah. one in front. Okay. Yeah, but nothing All right, happened. well, are you good? Yeah, yeah, we're good. That's why we're checking. Yeah, yeah, are me you too. you all right? I think so, yeah. Okay. It looks Thank good. You. All right, we'll man, have a good one. Boy, that was crazy. Just, you couldn't see it. It's, I mean, look, it's. There's, there's no lights out here. And it was a blah, blah, blam. I don't know. Car seems fine. We're gonna send it. There's a bonus for you, right? For having a cop car. You can just run over crap right in the middle of the road. It don't matter. Just keep on trucking. <laughs> like nothing ever happened. What was that? A pencil? What'd we run over? Nothing. What are you doing, big fella? I need to get to the gas station. <clears throat> Proceed to the route. At the stop sign, turn right onto South Avenue 64 East. Then turn right to merge onto I-80 towards Phoenix. Hmm. Our first gas stop here, I saw a, uh, a sign. I had about an eighth of a tank and I saw a sign, I don't know, sometime back. Well, it must have been 30 miles because it said, you know, there was gas stations and said, oh, the next one isn't for 30 miles. And I was like, well, I don't know the car at all. So we'll gamble. I mean, I, you know, I didn't cut it. Too, 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 too bad there. I'll tell you what though, old Johnny Law here seems to drive better after I run over the tire. Every time I look down, I'm doing almost 90. I got to yeah. oh. My suction cup thing and the camera went right off the car. Anyway, what I was saying was, every time I would look down, I'd be doing almost 90. I had to back off of it. Speed limit 75, in case you're wondering. Well, it says begin fueling, but it's not fueling. It's a story. I guess we gotta try a different one. I guess we'll see if this one works. It might be my car. It might be like, hey man, you're broke. No gas for you. Oh, there we go. Oh, for Pete's sake. Tell me I'm standing here and hold this. I just noticed this. I didn't see that before. Somebody run, tried to hijack my game. Holy crap.
Somebody hi uh, tried to hijack my gas. One more time, one more time, and I'll set this place on fire. Anyway, I'm at uh, Dateline, Ohio. I mean, date, date something or another, Arizona. I've got about, uh, Uh, I got about four hours, three between three and a half and four hours on the road so far. I don't know how far I'll go tonight, really, until I, I guess I feel like I'm done driving for the night. But I told y'all I was going to shotgun it to Dallas. I weren't joking. And I've been giving this thing hell. And it's been taking it. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. We'll get back on the road. 16 and a half gallons, and we're at 176, 418. I guess at the next stop, I can uh, try to calculate my fuel mileage. But that's a lot of numbers to remember, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. I couldn't count to 10 if I was missing a finger. While we're in this stop and go stuff, I guess I can tell you, let's see. Um, five and a half hours now we've been trucking along. And you know, when we're moving along like this, I can't, I can't even hear or feel the car running. That's how smooth it is. It's this. I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut at this stage of the game. Don't you know how merging works? He goes, then you take your turn, man. No cutsies. been on the road eight hours and I don't know if you can see it but we made it to New Mexico there is nothing on the highway here but trucks I thought about putting a CB antenna in the car so I could talk to them but I didn't want to put a hole in the roof you know Shady Grove truck stop. We got to get fuel again. 15.3 gallons. We'll check the mileage in a minute. I got to hit the head first. Well, uh, let's see. Eight hours. That's, uh, that was, I wanted to get at least eight in uh, because if I do stop somewhere, I want it to be as close to Dallas as possible, you know what I mean? And I have no idea where I am, just somewhere over the New Mexico line. Anyway, let's check the mileage so we can calculate our fuel mileage. Looks like we got 176.724. I don't remember what the mileage was before, so I'll have to do the Gazintas later. Maybe I'll put it on the screen here or whatever. Well, it looks like we're two hours from Las Cruces. Las Cruces. So we're headed there. It would seem as though I've been pulled over. I think I made an illegal U-turn or something trying to get over to the truck stop. Either that or he just wants to thank me for my service and share a donut. Oh, hold on. There we go. 
I'm trying How to get... How you doing, sir? Deputy Juan with the Sheriff's Department. Yeah, I'm doing fine. How are you? Good, good. The reason for the stop is... You stopped, like, almost right in the middle. I of know. The... I'm okay. all turned around here. Okay. I'm trying to get over to the... That truck stop over there. Uh, pilot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, do you have your driver's license, insurance, or registration? I sure do. Well, my insurance is... Uh, is on a... Uh, I don't know if it's on my phone or what. Or maybe it's in here. Oh no, that's a small thing. Anyway, there's my registration. Okay. And uh, let's see. License here. You'll, uh, you see my name on there, but my friends call me Punch. Punch? Or John. Either one works. And you don't have your insurance? Well, I'd have to dig it up on my phone here. Let me see. It's fine. Hold on. I'm trying. I got it. Hold on. I'm all. I'm all legal, man. <laughs> I just. I'm driving from California to uh -huh. Georgia. Okay. I'm chasing the bandit, and I've been on the road for like 12 hours. So oh, I just wanted to stop to the truck stop. Let's see. That's so, my... where are you heading to? Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, that's where You're I live. From where? California. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah, here you go. You can unplug it if you want. If it makes it easier. Alrighty, okay. If everything comes back okay, it's just gonna be a warning, okay? Oh yeah, no problem. And then can you help me figure out how the hell to yes, get sir. over there? I, I will. <laughs> okay. Appreciate it. Can't really blame him for pulling me over. You got, it's two o'clock in the morning and you got some knucklehead who can't navigate his way around uh, all the construction and everything with Georgia plates in a police in an ex police car, you know, trying to figure out where the hell he's going. I'm just talking to myself, dude. Okay. <laughs> all right, so here's your documents back. Okay, so what you're gonna have to do, since it's close right here, you're gonna have to actually go back on the freeway and get off on Mesilla. Central 1391 Get off on Mesilla, and then you're gonna go back, you're gonna turn left. So, will that be east? You're, you're gonna be going uh, south. No, if I get on the freeway, is yeah, that the okay. 10? So yes, east. East. So you're gonna go east. Okay, so let me ask you this. Uh -huh. If I just jump on, the, that's the 10 east, right? Yes. If I just jump on that and keep going east, mm -hmm. when will I come across the next truck stop? It would be all the way up to uh, bottom, it's gonna be bottom. Well, how far is that? It's uh, about probably 10, 15 miles. Maybe 10. Maybe 10? So 10 east, 10 miles, and I'll hit another truck stop. Yes, sir. All right, man, I appreciate it. All right, no problem. Yeah, thank you. Turn that down. Lights off, I can't see nothing. We're getting back on the 10 East. All this is all jacked up because of the construction. I know it sounds like I'm making excuses, but <laughs> it really is. <laughs> and if you've never been here before, you're just trying to figure out where in the hell you're supposed to be. All right, well, I'm at the Flying J, somewhere east of Las Cruces and east of the Rio Grande. It is 3.30 in the morning, California time which means I've been up for 23 and a half hours. I've driven the last 11 hours. We've covered 740 miles or something like that. I'm gonna go in this truck stop, hit the head, see if I can, I don't know, round up some truck stop grub. And uh, then I'm probably gonna stare at the back of my eyelids for a while. Wait till you see my accommodations. I scored a sausage, egg, and cheese waffle. That ought to be yummy. Ugh. And these, oh, whoops, no, hold on. And this is my accommodation for the evening. Only the best, right? Anyway, I think I'm gonna catch a quick nap and uh, I'll catch up with y'all later. Well, I'm up, uh, got about an hour, I think. I'm gonna check the oil and old Johnny Law here, but it, I tell you, I pushed this car and it's uh, it's doing pretty well. Let's check this oil right quick. Uh, 
Oh yeah, that's fine. I got about nine hours uh, to my destination in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I told an associate of mine I'd be there at four o'clock this afternoon. And it's four o'clock now. So nine hours would put me there at, uh, I don't know, one or two or something like that. And early is good, but I will make my commitment. So let's get back on the road. I don't, I don't know if I was halfway delirious or what, but I did get pulled over last night, right? Or this morning. I didn't catch that officer's name, but he was a super nice fella. Got a little sugar to get me going. I, you know, I don't know if you've tried these Skittles gummies, but if you haven't, you need to. Delightful. All right, we're off. I guess, uh, I don't know, some kind of crazy construction or something. We passed into Texas uh, some time back, uh, but I missed it, to be honest with you. And now, uh, I don't know if there's construction or what. But we're being routed all over the dang place. We're at the Border Patrol checkpoint. What's up, dude? You need a license or something? You need something? You citizen, sir? Oh, yeah. Have a safe trip. All right, thanks, man. What's up, fellas? Check this transmission fluid right quick too. Check it out while the car's hot, you know what I mean? Because it's a little slippy. It's good though. I wish y'all would look at all these bugs. You got a nice car, don't use one of those. People use them for all kinds of stuff. Let's see, what was that? 14 and a half gallons? Phew. Let's see, we have just under seven more hours to go to get to Dallas. Sun will be coming up shortly. I guess we get on it. Which way am I going, this way? Well, it says one way, so yeah, I guess it's this way. Oh look, the real popo. I'm Use the left lane to keep left to merge onto I-10 East. Listen, you don't have to be so bossy. Well, my fuel gauge has apparently quit working or it's stuck or something because I just filled up. So now I'm going to have to do the gazentas. Crisis averted. The fuel gauge is working again. I guess it just takes like, I don't know, 20 miles for it to figure out what's going on.
So I'm in some place called Stanton, Texas. And I've been on the road for 17 and a half hours, minus that like hour and a half or whatever, two hour stop in Las Cruces or whatever. I stopped at this place called Tarzan and Jane. Got me a sausage, egg and cheese breakfast burrito. If you haven't had one, you should try it. Delightful. Anyway, I got four hours left to get to Dallas. And this transmission is slipping. It's getting worse all the time. It's jerking mostly like in second gear, which I'm told is the death sentence, but <clears throat> I'm not going there. I'm just saying it's definitely doing it. It's all well and good. Um, in Texas, it takes three days just to cross Texas. God bless Texas. And there's nothing out here but dust and oil fields. We're gonna keep digging. Um, just hope old Johnny Law here don't give out on me before I get to Dallas. I got to get to Dallas. I get to Dallas and all as well, but I have to be there. Like I said, I have a commitment and that's a whole thing. I'm not going to talk about it, but I have to be there. And then once I'm done there, uh, then it can break if it wants to. Well, I don't want it to, but if it's going to give out on me, it needs to be after Dallas. Mm. This really is good. I'll finish this up. We'll get back on the road. I'm trying to give the car a break too. It's been steady. It's been steady at just as much as I have. And it's been steady 80 miles an hour. Dang it. You can't hit the hole in your face, knucklehead. All right, deputy dog. Get me to Dallas. Four hours. I'm gonna see if y'all can tell when we get on this on-ramp here. It's not, you're not gonna hear anything, but I don't know, maybe you can see it or whatever. It's more of a feeling. It just gets jerky going through second gear. That is if we get through the light. You ever wonder how many hours of your life you spend sitting at lights and stop signs and such? In construction, stop and go traffic, that kind of thing. Add it all up. Come on, keep it going. Turning red on me. Merge onto I-20 East. Oh, it shit perfectly that time. Maybe it's third. Okay, never mind. Apparently, I'm imagining things. I must be delirious for lack of sleep. For about 80 miles, continue straight on. made it 20 well made it to Dallas 21 hours of driving and I don't know like 1400 and some miles I'll have to figure it out tomorrow this car has no cruise control so my right foot is a baked potato my left leg muscles have the fibromyalgia my sciatic nerves been chewed Oh. 
And I think I've cracked my spleen. I'll get with y'all tomorrow. All right, we're ready to get back on it. So here's the deal. It's the following day, but it's late in the day. It's like 20 minutes after four by the time I got done with, you know, my business here in Dallas. So it's another 13 hours uh, to get back to Georgia. Um, and it's raining. So... I don't want to do a bunch of overnight driving again. So I think what we're going to do is the car's just been sitting here at the hotel. I parked it here when we landed and I shut it off and it hasn't touched it since. I haven't checked the whole, I haven't, I haven't done anything to the car. So I think we're, what we're going to do is we're going to fire up the old law dog here and head out of Dallas. And if I can get, you know, three, four hours or whatever of driving in, before it gets crazy dark and maybe get out of the storms and rain and stuff. Of course, I don't know. It could be headed the same way we are. Uh, and then, you know, catch a room, cheap room somewhere. And then in the morning, uh, pick up and finish off. So I, I don't know that you care about that uh, so much. But I think that's the plan. So we're going to leave Dallas now. And we'll see how it goes. But I'm not going to do the whole 13 hours and I'm not doing a whole nother overnighter. I'm not cannonballing it. I don't need to. We just need to do that. We just needed to do the cannonball thing to make sure we were in Dallas on time. Let's fire it up and get going here. How do you not stop at Bucky's? If you ever get the opportunity, you know, stop at a Bucky's. Just at least once. I'm gonna gas up and then go inside and check things out. I wish you would look at this place. This is crazy. Look at this. Let's see. Oh, that's jerky candy. Thank you. Filled up, got me some uh, steakhouse jerky. Oh, and the uh, hot blazing trail mix. Anyway, could spend them all night in here. It's crazy what they sell. Home goods and t-shirts to jerky and candy and stuff. Anyway, time to get back on the road. Our California extract made it to Louisiana. Let me 
me get a number two. Hey, a two A. Yeah, the combo. Holy oh, shit. You, my life. you didn't hear that? I, I was right here. I, was oh. like, I just took her back and it oh. I know. And the damn lightning was right there too. I bought me an ex I, I got a YouTube channel. Oh, that's what you Yeah. Anyway, I bought this in California. Oh, yeah? And I'm driving it to Georgia. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you just passed through? Yeah. Running by, I think. All the way from California. Yep. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Good, how you doing? I'm good. Man, that's some serious light. Five hours in, I'm in Monroe, Louisiana. I'm shutting it down for the night. This weather is crazy. It's supposed to get worse. But I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, y'all. We got about 700 miles left to go. It's about eight hours, I think. Oh. We had some hellacious thunderstorms roll through here last night. Look at this hotel coffee is ugh. but anyway we'll get back on it here and see if we can finish it out today Go dogs! It has done nothing but rain all dang day. Hello. Let's go, baby. Come on, dump it in the dog. Got another fuel stop here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I gotta find somewhere to get me a sandwich. I meant to tell you all too, I don't know what the deal was with the fuel gauge, but then it, it started working again and it's been working fine ever since. We're gonna forego the sandwich right now because it's lunchtime At and this place time, is busy. I'm just gonna get back on the dang road here. At the traffic lights, use the right lane to turn onto State Route 69 North. Then keep right to merge onto I-20 East towards Birmingham. Well, what in the hell are you doing to me? You told me left, then you tell me right. Whiskey's supposed to drown the memories. I wish I could drink some right now. But I got to drive to Georgia instead. How do y'all like my version? Use the right <laughs> lane to keep right to merge onto I-20 East towards Birmingham. You got it, sister.
state line. So I guess technically I'm in Georgia. I got to make it to the house, which is north of, north of Atlanta. But first, I got to make a stop, which is south of Atlanta. It's putting me out of my way a little bit, but I think you'll understand how important it is when we get there. Looks like we got us an accidente jamming everything up. Get a little bit of rain on the road and everyone loses their minds. When I went to uh, Wally World to get snacks for the road, you know, I guess Easter's coming, so they got the uh, the peeps out. Picked up these purple ones. I don't know if you've ever had a peep or not, but if you haven't, you should. They're delightful. I wonder if I could get this whole box in my mouth. Okay. I don't know how many stuff in here. I thought, uh huh. I'm not as good as I remember. I probably shouldn't have tried that. Ugh. Bad idea. We made it to McDonough, Georgia. I needed to uh, go in here. I need some stuff for Winston and some hub assemblies for the assassin. Boy, every time I come in here, I hear the sound of a thousand angels descending from heaven, sustaining one long glorious note. Now check that out. Got what I needed. Next stop is home. Oh, I forgot that was in there. I'm glad that Las Cruces uh, officer didn't inspect my trunk for pot. This car is beat all to hell. It has dings and dents and scratches. It's got holes all in the body and all in the roof. It's got paint peeling off. It is very uncomfortable to drive a long distance. It doesn't smell great. The plastic rattles. It's got a wobble, you know, in the front end as you're driving down the road. The front bumper and the hood lift and flap if you get too close to a 
tractor trailer. Everything in here is vinyl or rubber or plastic, and it has no cruise control. So do I think this police interceptor is a good car? No. And that's because I think it's a fantastic car. I mean, think about it. I did nothing to this car. The, the axle shaft and the rear bearings, and that's just because it was chewed and clunky, and Lord only knows how long that was going on. I checked the fluids, but I didn't change the oil. I didn't change spark plugs. I didn't put an air filter in it. I didn't even check the tire pressure. I did absolutely nothing to this car, except maybe clean it up a little bit, slap some stickers on it, fill it up with gas, and drive it from San Diego to Atlanta. And that trip wasn't exactly easy. Most of it was 80 miles an hour, all kinds of road conditions, rain, wind, dust, hell, we even ran over stuff in the middle of the highway. Now the transmission does slip a little here and there, and it will probably eventually need some help, but I would have no problem jumping back in this thing and driving it all the way back to San Diego. It's quick, it's stable, it's sure-footed. You feel very comfortable, you feel very safe. This is an unbelievable machine. I am uber impressed with this, and if you have someone in your life that's a Crown Vic fan, you need to listen to every word they say, because apparently, them are some pretty smart folks. When I got in last night, I just went straight into the house, wanted to see the family. It was raining and dark and everything, but I got up this morning, we ran this thing through a car wash, took it out to lunch, and all in all, we did 2,258 miles, I think. What a fantastic machine. Well, now I need to figure out what to do with it. You know, my intention was to drive it across country and get it sold, but I don't know, man. It's too good. Anyway, hope you liked this video. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And uh, for those of you who watch and like and engage, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Also want to thank Henry at the Katana Motors where I bought this thing, Amber for helping me get it fixed up, everybody who helped out along the way, everybody who shouted out along the way, and of course, more importantly than I guess anyone else, I want to thank James for, you know, supporting what I'm doing here and helping me uh, get all the paperwork straight, because as it turns out, that was important. We'll see you real soon. In the meantime, get off the couch and go wrench on something. Maybe 24 hours of lemons. What's up, buddy? We got a bandit. <laughs> We don't have a tucker, do we? What do you think? You miss your buddy? You miss your buddy?